and the devil tried to talk to them and say, don't do it. But God said, no, what is for him is for him. You can't stop it. So what I would do is, because I don't take no for an answer, nothing at all. Nothing. Ask my wife. Ask who know me. Ask my high school friends. Ask, ask my friends who know me for years. You can't tell me no. I'm going to find another way to get it done. Alright guys, um, I'm not even going to lie to you guys, to be honest. Um, for the past two weeks, two and a half weeks, my life been like hectic. A lot of changes, so I'm going to give you all updates on what's going on. And um, I don't know, but right now I'm on my way to BMW to get my vehicle service. I'm upset because um, y'all see what I told you already, what Olivia did to my AC vent. She yanked that shit out. However, guys, um, I'm heading to BMW right now. Where is my phone? Yeah, get the GPS in. Um, so today I'll be, you know, giving y'all an update on what's going on in my life. You probably, you know, if it affects my life, it affects the family life. Nothing big, you know, positive. What you call sour sweet situations, you know. However, um, I haven't been posting because I normally try to post two times a week here. Even though y'all might not notice it, I've been trying to do it where I um, post two times a week. I haven't had a set day. I'm trying to go right down to a set day and a set time. But until I can do that, I'll give y'all just two times a week for now. Or as often as I can. Let's put it at that. As often as I can. Until I can have a set schedule for this channel. However, guys. Um, y'all know we're purchasing a home and all of that stuff. And we're doing other stuff, guys. And, yo, I'm telling you, it's been hectic, you know. Um, the back and forth dealings that I have to do and um, still get the kids going to school. We still got to be parents and all of that stuff. So I can just only imagine, you know, because I've seen people reach out to us, especially my wife saying, oh, you do it. You have four of them and I have one and I find it hard. So right now, guys, I know you haven't been seeing videos out as often. You know, my wife tends to be consistent because she put her everyday life in her channel so you have to check out her um watch chrissy work channel she she makes that lifestyle videos over there i know y'all gonna love it but the carter family we post as often as we can but we're gonna go back to normal a matter of fact y'all gonna get vlog mass i'm at, let's no you know what i'm gonna ask carter over here carter gang over here and carter family over here and cmr fans over here y'all want vlog mass on the family channel because we're thinking to do it and we're gonna give y'all a new intro and that's one of the other things that gets us behind guys. We should have been had this intro done from like November. However, things get caught up on us and um, we weren't able to. But we're going to get it done by the next couple of days. So we could have that Vlogmas intro if we're going to do it. But guys, so right now, um, we're just doing a lot of, trying to take care of a lot of business moving forward. So we could start focusing back on the video side of it so don't think we're gone we're here still guys we're giving y'all a matter of fact y'all get work from chrissy every two days every two sorry two days out of the week every time for her so i mean y'all know what time it is but big woman thing um it kind of rough you know kids to school then gymnastic queen of armor state meet this weekend and this is a big meet 
You understand me? Tell me why this little girl worried about none of her friends is in her session. What they call session is, you know, the amount of people that's there with you. So she said none of her friends are, they're not in her session. She's going to be there with total stranger. I like that. So that way you could focus. You ain't got to turn to your friends. Or if your friend did good, you'll be like, oh, she did. And you feel like you can't beat that. No. When you have strangers, you just focus. You get the work done. And that's it. You feel me? So. But for the most part, guys, we're trying to do some business local. And we're trying to do business over here and both of them giving us a warm time guys like but you know what i believe though i believe that whenever there is something where there's a lot of obstacles it's it's worth it for me i've i've i've, I've remembered that throughout my entire life anytime i get something that comes easy always becomes a problem in the end or it goes easy but when there's something that causes a lot of obstacles and make you feel like giving up or don't want to do it, that's when you should do it. So, because that's when the devil trying to say, you know what? You're trying to be great. You're trying to be somebody. You're trying to set yourself up for the future. You're trying to set up yourself for your kids to come and inherit what you've done while you were, you know, doing your time. But we're going to stop that. That's what the devil is saying. So they put struggles and they put obstacles and they put eye openers and all of that stuff in front of you for you to quit but once you get over it and then you defeat it and then you accomplish it wow you're gonna leave so really and truly guys that's what we've been going through and we've been going over all them hurdles and guys it feels to a point where Every time we climb a hurdle, there's another one to climb. There's another one to climb. There's another one to climb. But you know what I learned, though? I'm not going to lie. You see, once we get past this, we're going to be in the big leagues. And then when we have hurdles like this, we're going to have big league friends to call on. And they're going to be like, oh, this is how you should do it. And I've learned that, guys. I've learned that when, you, when you're in a certain... And this is facts. I hope you are listening to this one. When you're in a certain league you attract a certain set of people with a certain set of knowledge and skill set for example if you're a celebrity you're gonna have celebrity friends if you are a youtuber you're gonna have youtuber friends and then you can learn from it if you're a billionaire you're gonna have billionaire friends if you're a rich dude you're gonna have rich people friends and they are gonna educate you on what they know and you're gonna learn on top of that but how do you get your foot in that door but if you're trying to become a billionaire, if you're trying to become a YouTuber, if you're trying to become one of those persons who wants to have rich friends, then should say, hope y'all don't look at it bad. Because when we use that word, Jamaican tend to look at it different and the mind is not in the right place. So they think negative, you know. But what I'm trying to say, if you're trying to be a progressive person or progressful, or is that a word like that? Y'all know what I mean, men are bright. But if y'all trying to be that person, and you're trying to get through the door. It's hard to get billionaire friends. It's hard to get rich friends. It's hard to get YouTuber friends, especially if you're not one. You understand what I'm trying to say? But once you get your foot through the door, you're going to have those friends. And guess what? When I was trying to get those, those type of people to socialize with or to be in my circle, it was hard to put your foot through the door. Because you're not going to see a billionaire and you're just a poor guy and he's going to be like, come be friends with me. Very rare that happen. It can happen. And they teach you everything that you need to know. No. You got to put the work in to become that. Then when you have those people in your circle, then you can um, get the information you need. And I promise you, that is how successful people remain successful. Because they surround themselves around successful people with skill set, education, the background knowledge, all of that stuff. Remember what I'm telling you. So when you see, they say, oh... Rich people only want rich people friends. Not necessarily. It's because those are the people that, those are the entrepreneurs. Those are the business guys. Like, let's say I go to the bank. Let me give you an easy example because I like to break shit down to the to the to micro level so y'all could get an understanding of what I'm trying to say. Let's say, let's say, let's use my, my family as example. Let's say we're making a million dollars a year, right? When we go to the bank. Believe it or not, whether it is in Jamaica or over here or anywhere, if you're making a million dollars a year, you go to the bank. 
they're going to treat you different than the person that's making $50 a year. And it's sad. Now, you even might get people reach out to you, try to educate you on certain things that you could invest in because they see that you're making the money. So how do you acquire that information from that person with that knowledge? You have to be in somewhat of a position. And I say that to say this. Guys, you making a million a year, all right, somebody who sees that potential might say, yo, you know what, I think you should invest in this car because this car is going to be one of these type of thing where in the next 10 years or the next five years it's going to be this. And then you invest in it because they have the knowledge, you think they're right and everything. Sometimes you make bad investment and you go broke again, but we're not going there. We're talking on the positive side. And let's say you invest in it. And in a year or two time, that, that 10,000 you invest turns 50,000. Wow. You're saying, wow. I didn't know that these type of money exists because you weren't in that circle, that atmosphere. Then you might meet someone that's in real estate and it was like, yo, I'm a millionaire. Oh, and you ask them, how did you become a millionaire? Oh, um, you know, invest in real estate. I was like, what? How, how you do that? You knowing that you get your money coming in the bank every day, you sit that money in the bank, not invest in it. Most of these rich guys, all of the money that they have is invested in else place. You might not find them with the hard cash enough. They might not even can go and just you know, do a huge spending on a cash because they invest that money elsewhere to generate that money. However, the guy said, oh, I invest in real estate. And then you know that you can invest in because you're making a certain amount of money. And you said to him, you know that I'm pulling in 100000 a year. And he was like, what? Or 100000 a month. And he was like, what? All right. And you asked him, oh, he do it. Because now you're in his league, he's telling you. But if, you, if you're a poor dude with no money, chances are he wouldn't just tell you like that. And if he do tell you, he's not going to go in debt because he's not thinking that you're going to follow through. When sometimes you would have followed through. So the point that I'm making, I hope I'm not just saying this stuff and you're not listening. So the point that I'm making is when you put yourself in certain position, once you get through the door, only you can take yourself out of that door. Outside of the house then, should say. Let's use it that way. You understand me? I'm trying to move. The sun is in my eye, but I want y'all to see my handsome face. But at the same time, driving safe is more, is better. So, with all of what I was just saying, um, this dude tell you to invest in real estate. He said, yeah, I know a property, a guy, one of my friends around here is selling one of his property for dirt cheap. You wouldn't know that. Because you probably would have to go to a realtor and go through the process and then some other guy would have picked it up. But you meet this dude or this person who say, yo, oh, Ari Rondes has sell his house for 50000 but he needs a little bit of renovation. And you'll be like, I'm paying 50000 for a damn old house. No. He said, no, listen, this is how I do it. I flip houses and then I pay that 50000 then I pay another 20000 to renovate it. So, yeah, I invest 70000 but guess what? I sell it back for 200000 Bam. So now you have 200000 to buy your next house for like 100000 And you put another 20000 or another 30000 to renovate it. And now that house where you buy for 100000 you pay the 120 or 130000 total because you renovate it. And you sell that back for 300 or 50, 350 or 400000 Then you do the same thing. Now you buy a house for 200000 Or you could buy three houses now for 50000 and renovate those and sell them back. You get what I'm saying? And now you're in the real estate game. Now you learn something because now you start to go to seminars and you start to meet people that are in real estate and now you start buying real estate in even different states that you're not in because you get your foot through the door. Y'all get what I'm saying? Get your foot through the door. As a matter of fact, that's what I'm going to title this. Guys, if this video posts and I didn't put get your foot through the door in the, in, the, in, the, in the title, comment and say, Carter, remember the title of the video, get your foot through the door. <laughs> but yeah. So that's how I look at life, to be honest, guys. I, I just feel like, so all these obstacles that I'm going through, I say all of that to explain the rough patch that we're going through with trying to do business, guys. And everybody seem like they don't want you to make it or they don't want you to be this young, successful black man or black woman or, you know, at this age, you acquire a certain amount of things and it all starts from nothing. While some people might believe, yo, I'm working my ass off $15 an hour or I went to college and I get a degree and I have a school loan and this dude telling me he's just doing this and he make money and he's trying to get me to approve this for him. Hell no, I'm not doing it. 
and the devil tried to talk to them and say, don't do it. But God said, no, what is for him is for him. You can't stop it. So what I would do is, because I don't take no for an answer, nothing at all. Nothing. Ask my wife. Ask who know me. Ask my high school friends. Ask, ask my friends who know me for years. You can't tell me no. I'm going to find another way to get it done. And that irritates people too. Like you will have a friend and they say, yo bro, them say no. And the policy says this. Hell no. We made the policies. It can be tweaked. That's why when, when you're trying to join the military, they have waivers. They'll tell you you can't join with tattoos. Or you can't join with this or that. But you can get a waiver and they wave it and you could join. That's how I look at life. Everything in life have a waiver. They'll break the policy for you if you're in the position. If I'm Bill Gates and it's wrong, right? If I'm Bill Gates and I need to get in the line to get my, 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 my car tags or something and they're saying, yo, you know, we're closing off at two, but I know somebody there. They're gonna be like, oh, yo, Bill Gates, come in. You know what, let him in. He's gonna be here at 2.15. I'm gonna go through, but that's not for it. So that's what I'm saying. Figure out a way. Don't ever take no for an answer, nothing at all. There's always an answer what you want. You just have to be respectful. You just have to go about it the right way and know the right set of people. Let me give you all an example before I close out and then I'm gonna give you a name because I don't want to sit talking here for so long and y'all get bored and click off my video. But I like to educate y'all on what I do and what I, because I'm not gonna keep no secret in my success if I'm so much successful like to help people, you feel me? But let, 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 me, let me say something to you, all right? Let me say something to you, all right? Oh, I get I get on so much where I didn't even get to um, say that. Give you all my updates. Let me give you my quick updates before I go back into my my, my public speech. You know, I think I want to do public speech. Do y'all think public speech will fit me? Damn, for real. Comment down below and tell me if you think public speaking would suit me. But Kushin, you always want to do something. You want to do this, you man. I dabble into everything. I don't know if that's why I'm not great at one thing. Because I'm good at everything. But I dabble into everything. But um, the next update, guys, I'm going back to school. I'm going back to school. And I'm going to get a different degree. A bachelor's in filming production. And uh, maybe a minor in photography. Because my wife wants me to learn that. Photography. You understand me? But I'll give you an update on that. But I'm already enrolled in a school set to start January. I don't know. My wife been saying, how oh, are you going to do it with editing videos and giving them vlogs and all of that stuff? I really don't know how I'm going to do it because I don't want to go back to school. I don't want to study. I don't want to do nothing. I've already been through that process when I was doing business administration. But I'm going back for it. So, yeah. But anyways, back to what I was saying. Um, so, the obstacles and people trying to make you decide that you can't make it. So let me give you an example. When I just got to America, I start when if y'all don't know, I got a scholarship to come here to do track and field and soccer. Yes, I'm good like that. Even though it became a disappointment for me because I wanted to be good at I wanted to represent my country in both sport. One of one of both sport. Soccer or track and whatever. School rough part. I didn't have family over here. I had to start work, so I had to come out of school for a minute. Anyways, when I just got here, they had a thing called social security over here. And my friends told me, they were like, yo, the school says they stopped giving out documents to go get your social security. In America, you want to have your social security so you could at least seek employment, so you could get your driver's license, and all of that stuff. I don't know what caused the school to say they stopped doing it for international students. At the, moment, at the time, I was an international student. So they said they stopped doing it for international students. My friend, he told me, he was like, yo, bro, don't even bother waste your time because they're not going to give it to you. They said they're not. I try and they didn't give it to you and all of that stuff. And I figured out how important social security was and I knew that I wanted that. Guys, tell me, literally two or three months after I got in America, I got my social. I have my friends that have been here for a while. And they didn't get it because the school tell them that, yo, we're not giving out any. Because all it goes, they, you need a piece of paper to take to the DMV, um, to, uh, DMV or take to the Social Security office. And then along with your v, um, your student document saying that you're a student, and you need whatever. Yeah. 
I'm so determined I didn't take no for an answer. Even though the school had said yes. You know what I did? I'm going to tell you what I do. And if you're a student right now, you're going through this. Do this. It will work. I did it years ago, maybe. How long? Damn, I've been in America for over 10 years. I did it over 10 years ago. But I'm pretty sure it will work now, still. Because you are supposed to get... you. you well, you're not supposed to, but I don't know if you're... I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong verbiage because, you know, I don't want nobody to correct me in the comment section. But I think you're you're able to get your social security as an international student. It shouldn't be an issue. It should, you shouldn't be denied your social security. Living in the country, you know, I don't think you should deny it. I don't think you're able to... Yeah, whatever. Anyways, what you need to do if you're an international student, I just gave you all the gem. All right? So what I did when my friends said you ain't going to get it, none of that. And the school even tell you, yo, we're not going to give you that letter. So this is what I did. I went to get my social security from the social security office. I went there with everything I had. Every documents that I brought from my, my passport, my school, all of that stuff. However, you need one piece, of docu one piece of letter from the school that says you're going to get, the, you need the social because they're going to hire you. So I guess the school is going to, you, you could work on campus, work and learn. At my college, we call it, my university, we call it work and learn. It's a work and learn program. So you work on the campus and you earn money and you get it to pay towards your books, your tuition, whatever it is. But for you to work, you have to have a social. So the school would provide you with that letter. However, they said they're not doing it. Hell no, I ain't taking no for answer. Guess what I did, guys? That's why I know your boy gonna make it anywhere in life. I go down to them social security office and I said, yo, listen, I need my social. They were like, you need this from your school. I was like, the school said that they're not issuing any more letters to international students. So you know what the lady advised? She was like, okay, get the school to write, put that in writing and bring it back to us. Oh, so I did this. I went back to the school. I was like, I need, I need this to, to get my social. They were like, no. I was like, how oh, am I going to be able to get a driver's license and do all of that stuff? They said, we're not issuing. I was like, put it in writing. Put it on one of your letter, Ed, stating that you're no longer issuing this letter or you suspend this letter for a time period. Or wherever you are, want to put it. Just put it in writing. And the school put it in writing and give me that letter. Boom, take it to the social security office. They were like, oh, all right, here you go. And they gave me my social. I came back and I told all of my friends what to do. They did it. Bam, they get their social. So I'm thinking you could still do it right now if they're saying that. But chances are I don't think the school's going to stop you. No, I think it's, you know, they're going, I don't know. But if that's an issue, do that. And it doesn't have to mean if they're not giving out the letter. If you want to get your social, you ask the school to do it. If the school's saying whatever, let them put it in writing. Then you take it to the social security office. Hopefully it works. I think it would work still because it worked for me. You feel me? Yeah, the next challenge I overcome, guys, they said you're, you're not supposed to work off campus. On your social security, as a student, it marked not authorized for work unless contact DHS. So once you provide that to most jobs, some jobs didn't understand it, so they just take your social and let you work. But some jobs will ask you, what's this? They can't hire you. So you know what I did? I don't know, man. Y'all come in and tell me if I should have said this. I'll cut it out in the video. I made it work. I photocopied my social security because they need a copy of your social security. And let's say when I sent, when I gave them my social security, that DHS writing is no longer there. Because most job at the time, I don't know how it is now, they'll ask you for a copy of your driver's license and your social security. Once you give them a copy of it, Unless they say, give me the original, but most time they just say, Yo, oh, the iron process, we're going to need this, we're going to need this, we're going to... So I just give them, and I was able to work off campus. Bam! My friends do it. They start work off campus too. I always figure out a way. I'm not going to go nowhere and suffer and, and not make it. So that's how it works for me. So all of what I just said to you, I'm not mad that I'm going through what I'm going through now. Difficult to get what I'm trying to acquire. Because I know when the obstacles are there, it's worth it. When the obstacles aren't, aren't there, I know it's too easy. And, and, and I've learned this in college too. They said when anything is too good to be true, it's just not true. 
And that's how you figure out a scam too. When people call you and say, oh, you win $10 million, but you got, it's too good to be true. It's not true. It can't be true. Keep that rule at them and you probably will get less scam if you're ever, if you ever a victim of scamming. But anyways, guys, um, still driving, almost there, you know. I gave you all of the talks. So I really don't want to give no more talk. I'm just going to end it right here for now. But the updates are, guys, the struggle that I was going through, we're going through with just getting business done, um, going back to school, um, being a parent, um, Amelia, Kyra, Verizon reminding me that I hold them money. Your payment is due today. If you have already not made payment, my payment is due today. I hope they don't just automatically charge my card. Hell no. Well, anyways, um, yeah, so that's it. I hope what I said motivate y'all or at least open your eyes to certain things or anything at all. And um, always take that approach, guys. Don't, don't take no for an answer. Figure it another way. Don't be disrespectful when you hear no, though. You don't be disrespectful. That will never take you anywhere. I learned this in, um, in primary school ago. Um, obedience is the very best way. Uh, 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 uh. You be respectful and, and, and... Is it obedient? I don't remember. They have a saying. You know Jamaican proverb. They say... Manners take you through your rural life. Something, that manners, manners able thing there. Yeah, I live by it. I'm full of manners. Sometimes I be dealing with people and they've been so disrespectful or they've been so not cooperative and mean and I feel like go off on them. And if it was maybe on my wife, my wife put you in your place. Many times and my wife be like, yo, you make people think you're a walkover. It's no, I'm smarter than them. They think they're walking over me, but I just approach a situation different. Because if, if, if you have the handle and I have the blade, and I need something off you, I'm gonna use reverse psychology and get it out of you. Learn that. Versus me getting angry, because no, when I get angry, you're gonna have all, yo, that, he's disrespectful, I ain't doing it. For example, we had a situation at the wharf in Jamaica, and the person could have been very nice to us, but they refused to, I don't know why, I don't care. But reverse psychology, you get what you want. So, it's one of those things, man. Anyways, guys, um. I'm almost there. I'm under a bridge. I don't like it because the last bridge collapsed in Miami with vehicles and all of that stuff. But stay tuned. Can't wait to give you all the updates and any other stuff. And any, you know, we're not hiding anything, you know. Um, yeah. So thanks for the support, guys. Make sure y'all subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to give you all that content. And it's really hard, guys. We're one of the only YouTubers that manage a lot of um, platforms. We have like five youtube channel the kids my wife my personal or two family channels that's five channels plus my music channel it's so far not music but my review channel like we got like six seven channels and we're still not up to date on all them because it's a it's a challenge plus we got other social media platforms so you know it's rough and we got other businesses so we're just trying to get there one step at a time but guys just be safe with us. Be watch us. Care with us. Love us. Subscribe. Turn your post notification on. Anyways, I'm out. Bye. Alright guys, so um I'm home now. Been home for a while, but I was extremely tired guys. Like really tired, so your wife here upstairs, so Olivia will get her problem. But I'm about to go get her, I'm about to take a shower, so I'm gonna have to keep her and I guess rock with her till she fall asleep. However, um I got most of what I was supposed to do. I got everything done. Um you know, took my car to the dealer, get the oil change. Yo, that shit cost me like two hundred dollars for an oil change. So Never used to use to be free service, but I guess the word, I don't know, whatever ran out. So, I gotta start paying. Anyways, um, I'm in the house now, I'm taking care of everything, so just here closing up the vlog, wrapping up, um, give you an update what's going on. And we got Vlogmas coming up, 
so if you are following the Carter family you are going to get videos every day over there because we got vlogmas <laughs> see so we're going to have to work on an intro um all of that looks up so yeah Chrissy and I up there I guess Chrissy will process all that you know what I mean so well, anyways guys just wanted to keep you all posted on what's gonna happen. Um, see you all tomorrow. Make sure you all like, share, comment, subscribe. Tell a friend about us. Alright, yeah.